Netflix got some heat over there, though. Hey, thank y'all. Thank y'all. Netflix got some, they got some documentaries over there. It was another one that I was watching. Uh, I was going, I was going to do the breakdown of the man with a thousand babies, but I had watched that, went to sleep and I forgot. I think I was on like baby number 14. I forgot where the hell we was at, but anyway, we'll get into it, but let's talk about lion ass Carly Russell. You know, she only got a little bit of time in jail, but we got us a little update on it. Let's see what they talk. about. I think they're going to give us like an overview. And then from there, I think they got like an Instagram post from her or something. I'm gonna, I'm still going to DM her again because she never opened up the last message. We're going to try to get her on the channel and just ask her a few questions. Maybe not about what happened because we knew she was lying, but more of why did you lie? Why did you do this? Why? Why did you lead on millions and millions of Americans? Why would you do that? It'd be your own people. It was a case that stunned the nation. She claimed that the man then picked her up and she screamed. He stated he then made her go over a fence. She claims he then forced her into a car. And the next thing she remembers is being in the trailer of an 18 wheeler. There was no kidnapping on Thursday, July 9th, 13th, 2023. My client did not see a baby. On the... Damn, that was a year ago. Why not? I could have sworn this happened in like March. July. Oh, I was in Kansas City when it happened. I could have sworn this happened like this year. I couldn't believe this was a whole year ago. Damn, I forgot all about that. <laughs> I guess we did need this update. Side of the road. Now the Alabama woman who was at the center of the kidnapping hoax is speaking out after more than a year. Anytime you hear of an individual uh, claiming they were abducted, um, and then finding out later that this was simply false um, is, is, is troubling. Carly Russell was 25 years old when she called 911 and then spoke to a family member saying she saw a young child walking on the side of an interstate in Hoover, Alabama, just outside of Birmingham. She told her sister-in-law she was pulling over to check on the child. With the phone call still remaining open, she never returned to the phone. But her sister-in-law heard a scream before the phone went silent. Officers would arrive to the location where she placed the call, and that's where they would discover Carly's red Mercedes with the engine running along the interstate. However, police were unable to locate Carly or the child in the area. I mean, just thinking, just thinking back on this. If I seen a baby on the side of the road. Hey, did you see that baby back there? I'm keeping it pushing. I automatically think a baby on the side of the road is a setup. Like, why is a baby on the side of the road? Maybe that's me. Maybe I don't want to get kidnapped or anything. Well, uh, uh, I don't want anything to happen to me. My job is to get up, do what I got to do, and make it home. But <laughs> if I seen a baby, I don't like, what that baby doing? It's kind of late for that baby to be out. Nah, oh, well, to each his own. I'm keeping it pushing. The car door to Carly's car was found open, with some clues left behind, including Carly's cell phone. Officers noted during their investigation no children had been reported missing in the area. Her disappearance sparked a frantic search effort to locate the missing nursing student, and police even offered a $25,000 reward. But then a remarkable development in the case. Carly returned home on foot nearly 49 hours after making the 911 call. While her return would be a huge relief for Carly's family and loved ones, investigators quickly began to discover something wasn't right, as they would say they were unable to verify most of her story and initial statement. During a press conference four days after her return home, Hoover Police Chief Nick Durses announced on the day Carly made the 911 call, she left work shortly before 8.30 p.m. But surveillance footage would reveal to investigators she stashed some interesting items in her car prior to her disappearance. Surveillance video from her place of employment shows Carly concealed a dark colored bathrobe, a roll of toilet paper, and other items belonging to the business prior to her departure. She ordered food from Tzatziki's at the Colonnade and traveled there. She then traveled to Target on 280, where she purchased some granola bars and cheeses. From there, she remained in the parking lot at that shopping center until 9.21 p.m. <laughs> she drove to I-459. Carly communicated on her cell phone with individuals known to her while on her path of travel up to the point of calling 911 
at 9.34 p.m. But police would find that those items she purchased were not found in her car when police arrived at the scene. Hoover police officers arrived on the scene within five minutes of being dispatched, and several other officers arrived shortly. They located Carly's wig and cell phone in the grass. <laughs> hey, I don't know why that was funny when we... <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm gonna get some flack, some pushback, but I don't give a fuck. Hey, finding the wig is funny as fuck. When I hear finding the wig, the first thing I think of is like a like a iguana or something. You know, the wig is supposed to be like an escape tactic. If someone tries to grab you, you want to make sure you have a wig on. So when they grab you by the hair, they just grabbing the wig, but you can keep running. So it's like an iguana. You know, they cut the tail off so the iguana can get away. But they didn't grab the wig. They took the wig off her head, set the wig down, and said, no, we want you. So, and then to find out she bought snacks before she went, this had to be some of the dumbest shit ever. I'm, <laughs> I'm saying, just, just listening to him describe all of this, do you know how... No disrespect, but all disrespect to this woman. Do you know how stupid you have to be to, to, <laughs> to leave work? And like, you know what? I'm going to stay just kidnapped. I'm going to say I saw a baby. I'm going to order me some snacks. Get me some granola bars for the weekend. I'm going to leave my wig. Do you know how stupid that sounds? Like, where do you... Do you practice this in the mirror? Like, all right, this is what we're going to do. Or do you just, are you just sitting at work Googling, like, how long does it take to come up? Like, what is the thought process? Because she wasn't drunk. She wasn't under the influence of anything. What is the thought process of this stupid shit here? Now, on my channel, we got, <laughs> we got dumb stuff and stupid shit. This is stupid shit right here. Oh my God, man! This I just I don't know, man. I know you you, you gotta believe them. I don't do that believing motherfuckers until I get the truth. Now I'm not gonna pass any judgment. I'm gonna give my opinion, but opinions can change. But from the get go, I knew that this was some bullshit. <laughs> oh my God! Near the vehicle, her purse was located in the front seat of her vehicle, with her Apple uh, Watch in the purse. The food she ordered for Tzatziki's was also in the car. The items she purchased from Target, as well as the items taken from her place of employment, were not in the vehicle, nor were they located anywhere around the city. Yeah, her boyfriend was leaving her. Go on to explain when Carly returned home on July 15th, surveillance video showed Carly walking down the sidewalk alone to get to her house. When they got a state... Now we need to see that surveillance video. We need to see how dirty her clothes were. Was her feet scraped up? We need to see if she went through a traumatic experience or not. Even from her after her return, Carly told investigators at the time she spotted the child walking down the side of the highway. Then a man came out of the trees and mumbled he was going to check on the baby. Come here, come here, girl. But the man <laughs> she stated he then made her go over a fence. She claims he then forced her into a car. And the next thing she remembers is being in the trailer of an 18 wheeler. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't remember them saying they, so they forced her over a fence. Like, if anyone, they, no one's forcing me over a fence. If I get to the other side of the fence, I'm running. And then I'm going to hop back over the fence before you hop over. So once you hop over, like now I'm back on the street and I'm in the car. You know what I mean? She stated that the male was with a female. However, she never saw the female. Only hearing her voice. She Come here, girl, get in the car with me. Hear a baby crying. <laughs> she told the male had orange hair with a big bald spot on the back. She said she was able to escape the 18 wheeler and fled on foot, only to be captured again and then was put in a car. She claimed she was then blindfolded but was not tied up because the captor said they did not want to leave impressions on her wrists. She said that they took her into a house and made her get undressed. She believes they took pictures of her. But she does not remember them having any physical or sexual contact. She stated the next day she woke up and was fed cheese crackers by the female. She said the woman also played with her hair, but could not remember anything else. At some point, she was put back in. 
Hey, we didn't we didn't get all these details last year. I don't remember all of this. I just remember the eighteen wheeler and then going into a house. I don't remember a lady playing with her hair, feeding her crackers. Damn, when she got out, man, she came up with an elaborate story. But this is just sound. She said it was a fat guy with orange hair and a bald spot in the back of his head. So she seen all of this in the dark, but she couldn't see or remember anything when she was at the house. They just had her in the house. They had her walking on. This is what they said. Hey, put your shirt over your face. So she's in the house like this. She ain't chained up. She's like, hey, what you guys got going on? Y'all got cheese crackers in here? <laughs> they didn't chain her up or nothing because they didn't want to. Like, what? If they are kidnapping her, who cares if she got marks on her? Like, y'all kidnapped her. They like, nah, we want you to be all right. Eat these crackers, girl. Survive. A vehicle she claims was able to escape while it was in the West Hoover area. She told detectives she ran through lots of woods until she came out near her residence. During this interview, detectives noted that Carly had a small injury to her lip, and she claimed that her head was hurting. She also had a tear on her shirt. Detectives also noted that she had $107 cash in her right sock. After her return, investigators found that Carly made suspicious searches on the web prior to her disappearance including do you have to pay for an Amber Alert and how to take money from a register without being caught. <laughs> oh, yeah. You have to pay for an Amber Alert. While you're kidnapped, you're in the vehicle. You got a text. Hey, I would like to buy an Amber Alert. Like, come on, man. What is she thinking? Her family? Hey, we, we like to pay for Amber Alert. She didn't, even, uh, she didn't even search for it on incognito mode. She just on the regular internet. On July 13th at 2.13 a.m., the day of her disappearance, the term Birmingham bus station was searched. On July 13th, 2.35 a.m., a search for a one-way bus ticket from Birmingham to Nashville was conducted with a departure date of July 13th. On July 13th at 12.10 p.m., a search for the movie Taken, a film about abduction, was conducted. There were two searches later to Amber Alerts on a computer at Carly's place of employment, including one regarding the maximum age of an Amber Alert. Although police were able to get an initial statement from Carly, they tried for a second time. However, they weren't granted a second interview prompting many questions at the time to be left unanswered. That is until less than a week later, when police received a statement sent by Carly's attorney, which would reveal the entire so-called kidnapping was actually a hoax. My client has given me permission to make the following statement on her behalf. There was no kidnapping on Thursday, July 19th, 13th, 2023. My client did not see a baby on the side of the road. My client did not leave the Hoover area when she was identified as a missing person. My client did not have any help in this incident, but this was a single act done by herself. My client was not with anyone or any hotel with anyone from the time she was missing. My client apologizes for her actions to this community, the volunteers who were searching for her, to the Hoover Police Department and other agencies as well, as to her friends and family. We ask for your prayers for Carly as she addresses her issue. I really hope no one wasted a prayer on Carly Russell. And attempts to move forward, understanding that she made a mistake in this matter. Carly, again, ask for your forgiveness and prayers. Anytime you hear of an individual uh, claiming they were abducted um, and then finding out later that this was simply false um, is, is, is troubling. And we've heard about this uh, several times over the past several years. Um, it does make me think, particularly in this case, that there may have been some type of mental health issues uh, in, in the background that may have contributed to um, this woman doing what she did in terms of making these false claims. Carly Russell was just 25 years old at the time. She almost pulled off the kidnapping hoax. But law and crime legal analyst Julie Rendelman explains there might have been underlying issues Carly was dealing with at the time. I ain't trying to hear that, man. 
I ain't trying to hear that. I got a flat tire outside. Now, if I go and fake my kidnapping, they throwing my ass in jail. It ain't about to be sending prayers out to this goofy nigga Mo. It's going to be like this nigga Mo just pulled off one of the dumbest hoax ever. They're going to throw my ass in jail. We don't give a fuck what she had going on. This motherfucker was Googling. She had eight hours at work to say that this plan is not going to work. All the time leading up to it, she had time to go put in the order, go pick up the food to realize, all right, I'm going to go through with this. Come on. Come on. Bake this. Bake this. Like, no. No, it ain't no underlying. This motherfucker was sane. She knew what she was doing, and she just fucked up. <laughs> she just fucked up, man. So, you know, I, I think on top of what you're talking about, remember, she also was looking up online, um, you know, Google searches about Amber Alerts. Um, so this was someone that really, in a sense, was preparing um, to commit this hoax. Um, and so uh, the age uh, is less relevant to me than the planning of it. It really does go back to uh, what goes through someone's mind uh, when they commit this type of crime. Is it someone that's begging for attention? Um, if it, is it someone that has some kind of um, separation from reality? Um, because it really did seem to take quite an effort on her end uh, to, to commit the crime that she did. It's still unclear to this day where Carly was during her missing 49 hours. In the woods. Carly herself would reveal more into her mindset nearly a year later, as she spoke out for the first time since the kidnapping hoax in a post to social media. As she celebrated her 27th birthday, she wrote, I wasn't going to make a birthday post, but I would be remiss not to publicly acknowledge the good... Man, so she was 25 when it happened, 27 now. Her birthday must have been like right after. This God has shown to me. He not only allowed me to see another year, but he changed the trajectory of my life from the negative place I was in this time last year. To those who have been there for me, your kindness and support have meant the world to me. Whether it was a text, call, direct message on social media, post, prayer, thoughtful gift, or words of encouragement, nothing was too little, and each helped me to fight to live another day. Thank you sincerely for helping me find the light in the darkest of moments. You no, know, your darkest moment was when your ass was in those woods. <laughs> your darkest moment was when them police came to the house and said, your ass is under arrest. <laughs> she would end the post by saying the work is not finished yet. But as I step into this next year of my life, I am filled with hope and optimism toward continuing to overcome challenges, cherishing those who cherish me, and embracing the future and God's plan for my life with an open heart and mind. So let me, I, I, well, we know it was a hoax, so we can clown all we want now. But when she said gone, uh, uh, she said, I would like to be remiss not to publicly acknowledge the goodness. I mean, I would be remiss to acknowledge the goodness God has shown me. Listen, when you were in that car, God was saying, don't do it. Think about your future. Don't do it. Keep the wig on your head. Get back in the car. Don't do it. You weren't thinking about God when you was out here acting a damn fool. <laughs> Talk about changing the trajectory. You changed the trajectory of your life. Ain't no one about to hire your lying ass. You were a felon. Talking about happy birthday to me. Nigga, fuck your birthday. <laughs> happy 27th birthday to me. I mean, you know, some might argue that it would have been nice to hear I'm sorry. Um, because um, that's something um, that law enforcement family and then those watching this um, and worried about her would have wanted to hear. At the same time, I think it's an acknowledgement that at the time that she committed this crime, she was not in a good place mentally. It could be an indication, you know, sometimes uh, without going further, without knowing more, that she could have been potentially in a suicidal state at that time, not in her right mind. I'm grateful um, to God that she kind of was able to get through it. And I'll be honest, she also may be very grateful that she avoided jail time. Because remember, this was a case where she was potentially going to jail uh, for at least a year and she ended up getting probation. So I think she may be very thankful um, that she is able to move on with her life. 
In March of this year, Carly Russell was able to avoid jail time after pleading guilty to two misdemeanor counts of filing a false police report. As part of her punishment, she was ordered to pay back restitution and must continue mental health counseling as part of her probation. As a former prosecutor herself, Rindleman says she's not surprised Carly pleaded guilty. You know, we talk about these cases, especially um, these false abduction cases. And the thing that's troubling, um, which I'm sure everyone recognizes, is remember not only to the family and friends, but law enforcement now is spending all of their resources on looking for someone that's not missing. They're spending all their resources on finding the abductors when there are no abductors. And so it's incredibly troubling when resources are taken or are brought to that um, emergency when there's so many other emergencies. With that said, I think in this specific case, the fact that part of her sentence ended up being not just community service, but mental health um, uh, treatment, it again indicates that this was not um, someone that was of her right mind at the time she was committing this crime. And so jail is not always the alternative to every single case. And sometimes there is mitigation um, that makes another form of uh, punishment more appropriate. During Carly's sentencing, she acknowledged she made a huge mistake, saying in part she was fighting through emotional issues and stress. She also said she was extremely remorseful for the panic, fear, and various range of negative emotions that were experienced across the nation, and specifically acknowledged and took accountability for the pain and embarrassment she caused to her family, church, friends, and community who were directly involved in the search efforts for her. While Carly Russell's kidnapping hoax sparked fury and even a few jokes on the internet, Rindleman says the former nursing student still has a path forward. I, I do hope so. I mean, you know, sometimes you can cry wolf a couple times. This time she cried wolf once and that was too much. Um, and, um, but she is, as you said, she's quite young. Um, it seems like, you know, she's attempting to make up for what she has done. And I do think um, that we aren't defined by that one moment in time where we make a mistake, however huge it is. Um, and so she'll really have to prove herself um, to not just her family, but in, in a sense to her community. In March of this year, an Alabama judge ordered Carly Russell pay nearly $18,000 in restitution. She was also sentenced to 12 months of probation, community service, and must continue mental health counseling as a part of her probation. Man, they let her off easy. I mean, it's cool, you know what I mean? All jokes aside, hopefully she gets the help she needs, but I don't think she needs any help. She just wanted some attention, that's all. Her boyfriend moved on with life. He realized that he didn't want to be with somebody that's capable of doing something this stupid. And he just moved on, man. Sometimes it'd be like that. You know what I mean? If my, when my ex left me, if I would have been like, man, you know what? I'm just going to go miss. I'm going to go hide in the woods in Germany, man. Ooh, they're going to pay for this one. They're, ooh, they're going to pay for this. I'm like, man, shut the fuck up, bro. I mean, I don't know. I, I really don't know how to feel about that. I personally don't care because I believe she was lying from the beginning. But like you guys said, I, I'm, I'm sure her parents are very, very embarrassed. Like every time I would see her parents, every time I would see Carly, I would always remind them of what happened July 13, 2023. And hey, man, you remember you went missing for 49 hours? What was you doing out there? Like, we're going to get to the bottom of this, Carly. But I mean, I wonder what the I wonder what the mental health like. What, what she got to do in there? What are you What are you talking to him about? Like, because she's not. There's not nothing. There isn't anything mentally wrong with her because she was at work. She planned all this. There was nothing wrong. She knew what to look for and what to Google. She was even smart enough to look up take. It. I have a distinctive set of uh, skills. You know what I mean? She knew what she was looking for. There's nothing mentally wrong with her. She just fucked up, man. She did, did some dumb shit. But it be like that sometimes. We all make mistakes. <laughs> yeah, like, if you're the therapist, though, what are you thinking? Yeah, you're like, I haven't seen all of this. Because, you know, you got to be, you got to be there impartial. Just listen. Okay. So walk me through the moments leading up to you actually getting out of the vehicle. Like, how did you take the wig off? Did you just... Like remove it and throw it down, or was it you didn't want to mess it up too much? You slid it back. 
and then you just like rubbed it in the grass a little bit to make it look like it was a tussle. What did you do? Because I would have to try to find this out. You know what I mean? Like, were you drinking on the job prior to leaving? What did you do before you left? Why did you why did you order food but leave the food in the car if you knew you was going to be gone for 49 hours? Like, you, you didn't think to take the food with you? Eat the food and dispose of it somewhere? I'm trying to add. I would, I would. I had. I had a therapist during the pandemic when he was asking about stuff that I was doing at work. And I told you guys I went to a therapy session back in 2013 with this uh, with this lady I was talking to. She had she had like a therapist. And one day she wanted me to come in there with her. Now I was in there. It wasn't my therapy session, but the, the lady kept asking me questions, and I had to ask her, "Why are you asking me questions?" I know she kind of the, the 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 lady I was with kind of felt bad because I had to ask the therapist. I said, "Hey, why why are you asking me these questions? I'm not the one that needs the therapy. I just came because she said that you wanted me to come one of these times. I, I didn't understand it. I'm like, why are you asking me questions? This ain't my therapy session. You don't need to know nothing about me. What the fuck are we talking about? Uh, but what else happened? Oh yeah, in that therapy session." I did tell the lady though, because I'm truthful. I'm I'm honest. She said, How do you feel when she asks you to do stuff? I told the therapist straight up, I said, I'm gonna be honest, I don't be wanting to do none of it. I only say I do it so she would be quiet. <laughs> but I hate doing like hey, let's go here. One time we went out to Savannah. It was my first time going to Savannah. She wanted to go out to like the beach or whatever. And I'm like, man, ain't nobody trying to do that shit. We rode down there. I'm driving down there, drove back. I was like, this is the dumbest shit ever. Well, at least she shut up. <laughs> Just leave me alone. Hey, let's go to Atlanta this weekend. God damn, I ain't trying to go to Atlanta. I ain't trying to drive to Atlanta this weekend and spend more money, man. I want to chill. But anyway, that, that's all that happened there, man. Therapy wasn't for me. But it wasn't my therapy session. <laughs> Imagine hearing that in the group session there, uh, doing therapy. Hi, I'm Carly, and I fake my own kidnapping. Hey, for real, you looking over like what? You fake your own kidnapping? Fucking weirdo. <laughs> I'm here for drinking. She's here for a fake kidnapping. Like, I can't control my drink, but she can control a fake kidnapping. Yeah, I wouldn't know what to say in there. I'd probably laugh. Like, damn, I heard about your story. You had everybody. Matter of fact, I was out there searching for you one night. I had me a 40 ounce. I was out there in the woods looking for your ass. <laughs> I was out there looking for you one night, and then I went to the bar after because I couldn't find you. So that's all I could do. Yeah, I was a supportive friend. I got off work for two hours. I went to the appointment with her for two hours, sat in there in the lobby for like 20 minutes, and then we went in there and talked to the therapist for like an hour. Shit. It wasn't my therapy session. <laughs> you don't need to know nothing about me. But we do have some um we have some body cam footage. So we go and get into that, man, before I get up out of here. Cause you know, I got a I got a lot on my mental right now, especially with this flat tire, man. Luckily, I got run flat, so I got like 50 miles, but I got like 30 miles left now. So I gotta drive to work, open up tomorrow, make sure they straight and have one of them follow me to drop my car off at nine o'clock. <sighs> if I could just kidnap myself, man, I would. Yeah, if only. Let me see. Is it done? Okay, it's about to be done now. Oh, they ain't had no snacks. They had the little water thing. You pulled a little white, I mean, not the white, but the little uh, paper cup down. You can only get like one drink out of there before it starts to, you know, saying soil up and shit. But yeah, all they had was water in there. They had some Jolly Ranchers, but I took two of them when I left. I took a red one, a cherry, and then I took the green apple. Green apple's my favorite. But All right, let me get this uh, body cam footage. We can go ahead and get started. We might only do one tonight. I got two, but. Let me see. Starting. 